Welcome to part 6 on the Tronian build video series. On this part I'm gonna make the shaft that's gonna get inside of here to connect this pulley with this pulley and then goes to the harmonic drive. I already off camera machined this bracket that will support one end of the shaft. The other end the bearing is in the in the c-axis um, table part i need to rework these pulleys because they not yet have a hole inside and make the lathe make the shaft on the lathe to connect those pulleys All the pulleys and shafts have now been fit inside of the trunnion. So here you can see the first belt going through here to a pulley in the back there. Then it goes to a smaller pulley uh, and then go to here because of the uh, servo didn't have enough torque. Just the same like happened here. Um, so here you can see it running. So that means that this axis now is also uh, fully functional. So mechanically the trunnion is now finished. For the table where the vise or the dovetail clamp need to be fixed to, I wanted to make my own uh, T-slot table, but I uh, it reminded me that I had this this table plate that originally came with my lathe, but I never used it, so I decided to uh, modify this one a little, so I can just mount it on here, since I'm probably never gonna use it on my lathe, so I. Uh, on the lathe I make this part in it so it slides on top of here and I drill the holes to bolt it to uh, to the harmonic drive so let's bolt it on and see how it's gonna look like so this is how it looks like when the table is mounted on the trunnion uh, the servo is now running at one third of its max speed uh, the table is maybe a little bit too big uh, compared to the rest of the trunnion. For now I just want to keep it, else I just put it on the lathe and make the outer diameter smaller. But first let's see how, how this is going to work. Since now all the axes are moving, I want to mount the drivers inside of the control cabinet of the CNC mill and see if we can control this trunnion with the software of the machine instead of just using the jog function and see if I can make some kind of simple fifth axis movement with fusion and see how that's gonna look like. I can't wait to try that. In the control cabinet there is luckily uh, still space for two additional drivers. My first plan was to put, if I ever get a fifth axis put it in a sep separate cabin but since the uh, those drivers for small servers are smaller than the big ones for the X, Y and Z axis I think it will be fine to just mount them one here and the other one will be here I'm not really worried about it's getting too hot inside since I don't believe my servers are running at max, max power all day so I first I'm gonna put some plastic here with some tape then I need to drill four holes and tap them so I can mount them but I don't want chips getting inside the drivers below so I need to be careful on that and then I can wire them out. The drivers have now been fit inside uh, I wired them up together on one fuse and I made the connection between the controller and the drivers so what I'm now gonna do is run the cables from the drivers to the trunnion 
uh, I just kind of looped them through the door instead of using the these ones. Uh, then I can uh, program them and then just uh, let's see if I can control them with the with the use of the CNC software. The controller and the drivers are now uh, powered up. I uh, in the settings of adding CNC I set the right amount of steps per degree. I run the cables over the machine, go down here and hooked up to the servos. So now if we use the jog wheel, selecting the B axis, we have control and then we select C axis and we can do the Y axis, C axis and X. So all five axes of the machine are now uh, controllable by the adding CNC. So now I'm gonna set the zero point for the trunnion which needs to be in the middle of uh, this rotation axis and the middle of this rotation axis. And then let's make some small five axis program to get this thing, let's, to get all these five axes work together. Let's see how it's gonna go. I made a small program in Fusion. I draw a square with a big chamfer around it and use the swarf function to cut the chamfer around. So in simulation it looks like something like this. It gives some uh, collisions on the tool holder, but since I'm gonna cut some air, it should be fine. I set the work coordinate system all the way in the bottom, which is on the uh, where all the axes on the Tronion will collide. So it's really important for me if I'm gonna make parts with the Tronion that the uh, coordinate system needs to be on the rotation of each axis and not like normally you should set the, 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 the coordinate top on the top but that's not working for me since my controller doesn't have um, uh, RTP through, through point control something like that so let's see how it's gonna look like um, on the Tronion the first five axis move so I loaded the program, let's see. I used the, the spindle speed so turn it super low, but just to simulate that the spindle should be running. Well, that looks super nice. I, I can see on the control screen that all the axes were moving. Now I want to see some real cutting, so I'm gonna mount the chuck on it, put some round stock in it, and let's see if we can uh, cut a real chamfer using the fifth axis. I mounted up a chuck. It's a, a big one, a 160 millimeter one, because it's the only chuck I have that. It can be mounted from the front. I didn't locate it at all, just put it on, just by the feel, try to center it. Uh, I put in some round bar stock, 20 millimeter. Stick it out pretty far, because I don't want to think about any collision right now. Um, yeah, it should just fit between the vise. Yeah, let's make a small program um, to cut a hexagon shape, uh, face it off, 
and then just uh, cut the chamfer around it see how that's gonna look like what I did was uh, I draw a small hexagon with a chamfer on the top and uh, in the setup I make a stock which has the, the, the length from the center point of the rotation to top of the stock that's inside the vise so that should be all set fine so first I'm gonna face off the top uh, do the outside contour so the hex is visible and then the part will be tilted to use the swar function again to cut the chamfer around let's see how it's gonna go let's run the program I'm gonna hold my hand on the the feed control so if I think it's uh, not going well I'm gonna lower the feed so that's maybe you might want to kind of see it in the video Obvious there is some chatter because of the high stick out. Well, that didn't turn out too bad. Besides the fact that you know we're gonna have a lot of cheddar because of the stick out. So now I know that it works and that it uh, works on my machine. <laughs> and that I know that it's really cool to see these five axis moves. I first gonna finish, finish it up, make the covers for these parts, uh, finishing the cables, adding home sensors because now it's just um, homed uh, manually um, and after that I will just uh, remount it back, align everything super well because now I just placed it there, everything is just aligned on the eye um, and then I want to make my own uh, dovetail vise because this is, this is too big and it only works for round stock I want to make a, uh, my own dovetail clamp since if you want to buy these things it has it, it will cost the same amount of money where I built the whole trunnion for so let's see if I can make it myself so these things will be covered in the next part thanks for watching again and I hope I can see you all back in the next part which probably gonna be the last one for this Johnny and Bill series. Thanks for watching. See you next time.